So you already set up your basic rendering. However, you think there is still room for improvement. And I'd say you're right. So let's do that. The next thing I want to do is add some highlight behind those spheres here by adding a point light. So in my scene view, I will control click on the point light button, which again will create a point light. And that's a bit weird about Houdini, or actually it's kind of useful. So you're looking through this point light now, and if you hit the lock button again, you're able to reposition it by just moving around in your viewport. However, in this case, I do not want that. So the point light has been created at our camera position, and I'll just make sure that the tool handle here is checked and move this point light back behind our spheres here. Eh, something like that. Okay, let's look back through our camera and maybe move that point light to the side. Okay, let's hit render again few things I'm seeing here. First, my background material is still reflective, and then the light might be a bit too bright. So let's stop the rendering, just for good measure take another screenshot here, and go to our material first, and in the background material go to Reflect Base and uncheck Enable Base Reflection, and then let's re-render this. So that took care of this ultra-bright specular reflection on the background. Let's make another screenshot here, stop this rendering, go to our OBJ level again, and maybe dial back the strength of our point light a bit using the exposure here and setting that to maybe 5 instead of a 7 that we had by default in there, and hit render again. And now I'm going to compare this to my previous setting here, and I kind of like something in between, so maybe let's just take another screenshot and increase the exposure still a bit to 6, maybe 5.5. <laughs> yeah, I like this. Okay, screenshot this again. And although this is starting to look nice, I'd like to add a few things. First, I'd like to add depth of field. So let's get back to a scene view here and make sure the camera is unlocked and have a look at the scene from the side and set up the depth of field and actual focal point of the camera. So highlight the camera, make sure the tool handle is selected and hit Z while hovering over the viewport, which will bring up this gizmo here. And this is your focal point. So I'm going to move the focus back to the spheres here and dial back the actual plane that's in focus. So everything that's between those cones should be in focus. So a really tight depth of field here. Let's go back to my main camera. For the depth of field to actually show up in my rendering, I have to go to the out context and in my mantra node, configure mantra to render depth of field by just checking enable depth of field in the rendering tab here, like so. Okay, let's hit render again. And you can see that, as I mentioned, Mantra is not the fastest engine on this planet. And B, there are spheres now that disappear in this depth of field, in this blurry bokeh down here. Next, when I look at this image, it starts looking nicely, admittedly. However, it's a bit dark because it's missing global illumination. It's missing diffuse bounces. And that is because Mantra by default is not set up to take into account global illumination, but it's really easy to do so. So again, in the out context with the Mantra node selected, Let's maybe draw this down here and go to the Limits tab, which is in the Rendering tab here. And within the Limits tab, you can dial in how many reflection, refraction, diffuse, subsurface or volume bounces the render engine actually does. So let's just screenshot our current state here and increase our diffuse limit to maybe three diffuse bounces. And immediately you can see that the image got brighter because we now got more diffuse light in the scene. So maybe we want to dial back our point and our environment light. But also you can see, especially in those areas here, that we are getting this nice diffuse interplay between those two surfaces. So yeah, in the OBJ context, maybe, just maybe, let's dial back our point light again to 5.0 and go back to the out context and configure Mantra for final rendering. So currently we're in this preview mode where we have buckets all over the place just trying to give you a coarse preview image. You can disable this mode and switch to final bucket rendering by just clicking this button here, which is now preview mode unchecked. And we now have this spiral rendering mode. As you see, this does not converge well. So in the out context in the mantra node, let's go back to the sampling tab, which is under rendering and increase our samples. And without going into too much detail here yet, you've got primary samples, which is the pixel samples per pixel, and secondary samples, which are dialed in adaptively between the minimum sample count of one sample and the maximum sample count of nine samples, depending if this noise threshold here has been reached or hasn't been reached. However, as we have lots of depth of field in this scene, depth of field usually is determined by the pixel samples, so let's increase those to say 12 by 12. And immediately you can see that the noise level in the depth of field went down, but also that our render times increased massively. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but Mantra isn't the fastest engine on this planet. 
So when we look up here, the ETA, the estimated time to arrival, is about half an hour for a 720p image. But well, that's the beauty of rendering physically based images with Mantra. If this at some point is finalized or converged, what you can either do is right click in here and save the frame to your disk using a dialog that pops up when you click on this. Or if you don't want to use this preview window workflow here, stop the rendering and in the images tab in Mantra, set up your output directory here by either selecting it with the file browser here or just using this expression. This is HScript, Houdini's other more legacy scripting language, telling Houdini to render this into the folder where the project file sits, which is called $hip, then create a subfolder called render, and then create an image, which has the same name as your hip file, the name of this output node here, and then a frame number with four digits. And then you're just going to hit render to disk, and nothing much is going to happen when you're just rendering out a single frame. So there's no status bar for a single frame that only appears when you're rendering out animation. But when you open up your task manager, you can see Houdini is working really hard to render out this image here. If you guys like what we're doing and want to support us, you might want to head over to our Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of our patrons, especially Rafik Anadol, Chris Hebert, Important Looking Pirates, Encore VFX, Patrick Fillion, and Gearbox Studio Quebec. Thanks so much, guys.